Well, technicians, I don't know if you've ever rented this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have. DTCs that just won't clear and lots of DTCs that don't seem to clear. And maybe the car didn't come in for much of anything. Maybe you just had a low battery or it was time to replace a battery. And so you're doing your work. You've got a battery charger hooked up. What do you do? I mean, you start replacing modules because you have a bunch of DTCs. You start looking for bad powers and grounds because you have a lot of DTCs. You're looking for a common denominator, maybe a bus issue, or maybe you're thinking maybe that old battery charger you're using to charge the customer's discharge battery, maybe that's causing issues and really making the modules just wig out and set a lot of codes. So here's your old battery charger. It's time for a new one. So you get yourself a brand new state-of-the-art battery charger that has the clean power supply that you need. So when you're not really wanting to charge a battery, you've already got a good well-charged battery, but you just want to keep it maintained, maybe 20, 30 amps or better with the key on while you're doing programming or just diagnostics. And we're having the same issues. So what's going on? Well, let's take a look with our scope to see exactly what happens when you hook battery chargers up. So here's the codes we were getting on this particular Ford Fusion 2013 hybrid Ford Fusion. The hybrid really doesn't matter that much for what we're talking about today on these DTCs, but you can see tons of codes were set. They were not there before. The car hadn't even been driven, just in some battery charging and whammo, there's a bunch of codes, and there's also in the, in the BCM. So PCM, BCM codes, codes out your ears. So we can start looking at, and they won't clear, they come right back, start looking at a scope pattern of two different channels here. Now you'll see, this is uh, basically the, you know, do I replace my old battery charger? Well, this is a new state-of-the-art battery charger, and this is what we're seeing in what's called boost mode. A lot of newer chargers have a mode where if the battery's really, really low, we can put it in boost mode and it can put out 15, 16 volts, lots of current, maybe 40 or 50 or more, 100 amps, and get that vehicle started just as you have boost box, like you had a boost box hooked up to it. Now what we're looking here in this, this scope pattern, we're looking at um, on the red value, it's a little bit over 15, almost 16 volts. That's the red channel, a little bit of a waviness to that. That's to be expected, doing that much energy to try to boost a car battery. And you see this big, almost sine wave, really more of a sawtooth wave, but definitely going up and down with big drastic movements. That is a one volt scale I'm looking at. So we're seeing about the 20 volt scale on the red channel. So we're about 16 for just DC power. And then we turn it to AC on the second uh, channel in blue on our scope. And we're looking at the alternating current, not the DC, but the alternating current, stuff we don't want in the vehicle that can really adversely affect. That's that ripple that'll just bang the heck out of the brains of electronics, not permanently, but temporarily, like in the case of these codes. So we're seeing on a one volt scale, we're seeing about 500 millivolts peak to peak. We're about a half a volt. Now, anybody has watched any of my training videos or other instructors and learned about ripple voltage with a conventional alternator, about a half a volt of AC voltage detected at the battery, and this is very simple to do, you simply turn your meter to AC instead of DC, and you hook this right between the positive and negative uh, on your voltmeter, your common, on the meter, and you, on AC, start the engine, and if you see more than half a volt, in this case we're scoping it, same thing as looking at the voltage on AC on the meter, if we see more than half a volt of AC, we're thinking, hmm, we've got issues with ripple the alternator uh, rectifier, the diodes are breaking down and that could be explaining crazy electronic issues. Now, this is right at that ragged edge where we'd say too mo any more than that, that would be a suspiciously high amount of ripple. That's in boost mode. Let's look at the same charger, only now, not an old charger, this is a state-of-the-art charger, it's in power supply mode. Now this is the clean power that we have that mode set on the charger to do programming of modules. Now we've changed the scale on the blue uh, scope lead, that's channel A on the scope. Now we are looking at a 500 milliamp scale. So the very top to bottom of that whole scale is 500, not milliamps, millivolts, half a volt basically of AC. And we're running about, looks like maybe 250 millivolts. So about a quarter volt of AC, completely acceptable, 
won't hurt the electronics, won't mess them up for programming. And our DC voltage is back down to about 13 and a half volts, as you see on that blue scale, still on the 20 volt scale. So the, the, the I'm sorry, the red trace channel B on this scope, the second trace, that's red and that's about 13 and a half volts. And that's where we want it for maintaining power to your vehicle while you're doing extended diagnostics and or programming. Now let's look at another example here and we've changed the scale for the AC, that's in blue, once again and made it even smaller. Now we're on a 20 millivolt scale. The red channel, channel B, that's a pretty steady line and it's about 12 and a half, 13, about 13.1 volts. But look at this 20 millivolt scale. We're barely doing five millivolts. What charger is that? That's not really a big old battery charger. It's not an old battery charger. That's one of those newer state-of-the-art battery tender type of chargers you can leave on the vehicle for extended periods of time and they have a float mode. In fact, this was not in float mode, it was in charge mode. But the float mode means basically we've charged that battery up and for the next 72 days or 72 hours, with however long it's left on the vehicle, whether it's stored in a barn or it's just in your shop overnight, it's going to then taper back and give a tiny bit of voltage called float mode so we don't boil the battery and have a premature battery failure for extended charge time. So those battery tenders, they oftentimes are called, that's just barely, tweaking the ripple scale of AC. That's a good thing. So here's the bottom line to learn from all this. Battery chargers are all different in how much ripple they put out. You might check your old charger. I'll bet you it could be a volt or more of AC ripple. And it definitely can cause issues with electronics, with your diagnostics, make your scan tools kind of sometimes warp out temporarily, make modules in the car confused and set codes that really are not relevant and you can't even clear the codes sometimes. So the bottom line is turn the battery charger off and clear codes with a fully charged battery and the codes won't come back. So the takeaway information you want to make sure you keep in mind at all times when you're doing diagnostics on a car and you're running the battery down so you have a battery charger on the vehicle, your battery charger may have enough ripple, even a high quality battery chargers that we can buy today have enough ripple to, on some vehicles, induce false codes and even prevent you from clearing those false codes. They come right back. So take your scope, look at the ripple of your charger, try different modes of your charger and so forth whenever doing diagnostics. We don't want to be caught with a lot of hours spending chasing ghosts of problems that don't exist.